Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here and today what I'm bringing to you guys is a quick video on some of the upcoming changes that we are going to be seeing in the July update in regards to trade skills and some important things to compare when we are looking at the upcoming double XP events and bonus XP events I should say in the end there as well. What we're going to be seeing generally in this July patch is a reduction to the XP needed to level things up. So I'm going to talk you guys through how you can use the double XP events to maximise on this, as well as a few things to watch out for in-game and maybe to stock up on depending on your playstyle and kind of things that you like to do in the game in regards to trade skills. Now the first thing that we're looking at here is the bonus XP events that we're going to be seeing throughout June and early July here in Eternum. Firstly, we're going to be getting a Gathering Skills bonus event. This is going to be June 13th to 16th. I've made a full video on this just a couple of days ago on the channel, so if you guys want the full info and breakdown on this, feel free to go ahead and watch that video there. But generally, what we know is some people did point out this was a bonus XP event. However, for both the Gathering and the Refining Skills on the final July 4th weekend event here, down here where it says All XP, these are noted as, if I scroll down to show you guys, double XP. XP, so double gathering and double refining, which leads me to believe that they're going to be double XP in their own respective week events as well. And they've simply called it a bonus event so that we don't complain about the crafting XP only being 1.25 times, but that is still really, really good. So what they are going to be doing in the July update then, firstly for the gathering, well, we're going to be getting a sped up progression for logging and fishing, making it easier to get to level 200. My estimate is that it's not going to be as good as this double XP event, however, so if, like me, you are on level 11 fishing, then maybe you want to take this opportunity to get that skill up if it's something you've been wanting to do. Obviously, all of the other trade skills there are worth getting up, particularly my login, I'm certainly going to get that to level 200 because I think the double XP event is still going to be more than the XP reduction we're going to see. However, if you don't have the chance to do that, just know that the login and the fishing are going to be a little bit easier to do after July. July. The rest of them are, however, staying the same. So if you don't have your tracking and skinning, your mining or your harvesting up to 200 plus, then I would certainly recommend doing those if you get the chance. Now, secondly here, we're looking at refining. All refining skills will be faster to get to level 200 after the July update. This basically is to aim to keep these within the kind of range of leveling up. So obviously with the gathering, that kind of goes alongside your leveling phase pretty well. The refining stuff tended to stay behind a little bit, as you guys can see. It's a couple of those still not level 200 for me. So realistically, what they're trying to do is make that kind of coincide with the leveling process a lot better. This, again, I don't think is going to be as quick as a double XP event is going to be. So, again, I'm certainly going to get my stone cut in the final eight levels there. And I'm going to try and get the woodworking all the way up as well. Because I do think it is going to be quicker on the double XP for these ones. However, again, if you don't have the chance to play during this event or the July 4th event, then don't worry because these are getting reduced XP totals required to get to 200 with the July update. Now, specifically in reference to the refining side of things, then, when we get the July update, is also going to make all of the reagents have the tier 5 values. So that is things like your flux, your sandpaper, your tannin, all of this good stuff over the side here. It is all going to be, for example, the obsidian flux, the tier 5 version of this. So what they're going to do is give players the chance to have a way to craft or to convert the current tier 3 and tier 4 reagents into tier 5s and tier 5 is just going to be the standard across the board. Now if you're anything like me you've probably got a good variety as you guys can see just above the camera here quite a lot of these reagents already in probably multiple bank accounts to try and uh, spread out the weight capacity a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily recommend stocking up on these as such for this update because I don't think that it's going to be something where you're going to drastically need them. I would imagine that the price is going to level out and be a lot cheaper than they are now because it's just one continuous thing across the board. However, if you do have some in the storage, it's not going to hurt to keep hold of some so that you can convert them up to tier fives and maybe initially sell them for a little bit of money or just know that you've then got a lot of reagents for whatever you want to do going forward in the game. Now, finally, moving on to crafting then. Crafting is going to give players more value for the tier 4 and tier 5 crafts in a trade skill after the July update. So, for example, if we go over here to the weaponsmithing, which I've got level 200 on, got this right near the start of the game and it was a massive, massive grind. But essentially, your tier 5s are going to be your oracalcum stuff here. These are going to give, currently they give about 10,000 weaponsmithing XP. These are going to give more than that. We don't have the exact values yet, but we know that it's going to be more. And the same for the star metal or the 
equivalent to your fourth thing of whatever station that you are on. Again, these currently give things like 3.2k-ish weaponsmithing, and that is going to be upped. Now, what's really important here is that the July 4th weekend event, so the 1st to the 4th of July, we're going to be seeing a 1.25x XP to crafting experience. So this is going to mean that crafting XP is going to be a lot better across the board, and that's not just for tier 4 and 5s, that is for every tier. So even if you've got some trade skills you've been really slacking in, like I've got a couple little stinky 50 to 70 levels dual crafting I'm looking at there, then you can get all of these up much, much quicker. My sneaky suspicion behind the scenes is that potentially the 1.25 times that we're going to see to the XP is probably what the tier 4 and the tier 5 stuff is going to get in order to boost it up after the July update. So it's certainly going to be a good, good time to get any trading skills up that you can during that weekend. We don't know the exact values. That's just my speculation. So it might not even be as good as that or it could be better. But either way, it's certainly going to be a really good event. Like I said, particularly if you've got anything under sort of the level 100 or level 150 mark where you can't craft the tier 4 or tier 5 items yet. As that is obviously going to make a big difference for the lower levels as well to make them a lot quicker too. Now, one thing specifically to point out here is that the furnishing and weaponsmithing XP kind of trade skills are getting a big reduction in the XP required to get these ones specifically to level 200. So as you guys can see, I've got my weaponsmithing up there, but my furnishing, if we go down here, we're looking at level 118. Now these are going to be much easier after the July update to get to level 200, so it's going to require you overall less XP, and they are also going to have that buff that I talked about before for the tier 4 and 5 items, giving you more XP, so these actually could end up being quicker even than the double XP event or the 1.25 times crafting XP event that we're seeing on July 1st to July 4th. However, because we don't know what the exact values are yet, I wouldn't necessarily say hold off on them, especially if they are something that you're trying to max out, but those two specifically could end end up being a very similar pace to what we're going to see in this XP event. The other ones, however, I think that this event is going to be either as good as, if not better, than the XP values we're going to see changed. So I'd certainly recommend making the most of it for the rest of the trade skills. And of course, like I said, if you are trying to get weaponsmithing and furnishing as a priority, using this event certainly won't hinder that. But that is going to be it, guys. Just some heads up about some upcoming changes to the trade skills, as well as how you can link these to the events and make the most of it. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do make sure that you drop me a subscribe and a like down below both those things hugely help to support my content so i'd really really appreciate that other than that guys i will catch you again very very shortly with a brand new upload so thank you for your time thanks for watching take care and peace